I want you to know that prayer is a requirement of God's children. Prayer is not what I was taught as a young child. Get up in the morning, open the Bible, read a chapter, and pray for a half hour. How many were taught that? That you had to have morning devotions. I was taught it was morning, like I was real sad time. Because I could have been playing football. How many didn't like the regime of prayer at a certain time, certain way, in a certain place? You say, oh, wait a minute. How many have a friend that's named Ceasing? S C. C E S I N G? Is that it? C E A S I N G. How many know a person that has that name? Anybody? Okay, Jesus said to pray without ceasing. And unless ceasing is with you, then what should we do? Pray. Now I'm going to tell you some facts about prayer. There are many reasons to pray. I think the first one is praise. I think the most important thing to do is begin to tell him how you love him, how you appreciate what he did for you, and exalt him in your heart, and praise him from whom all blessings flow. Some of you have gone through situations this last two or three weeks. Very sad. You lost some very special people in your life. But how many would like to know somebody, a, a brother or sister, and never could go to Hawaii for a week? And, and you felt really great, they got to go. All right. Yeah. Mike and Maureen or Jan are going. Yeah. And I'm really pleased for that. And I thank God they get a chance to get away from all the problems that they have to deal with here. Number one problem is, anyway, we pay in a petition for something that we need in our life. And my personal life is to have more wisdom, knowledge, understanding. This old body of mine ain't going to be around much longer, you know. It's okay. Because what lies ahead for me is something so glorious I can't even explain it to you. I'm going to get out of this silly body that if I don't take a shower once a month, people know it. I may know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's important that we do that. I also like to pray for the needs of other people. Not just other people's physical needs, but in particular, their spiritual need of understanding, wisdom, knowledge, patience, kindness. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith. That the fruit of the Spirit will blossom out. I do some gardening for Dorothy when she can hook me into doing it. And she has a fig tree that did not produce two years ago. Beautiful tree. 
Do you know what her first instinct was to do with that tree? Cut it down. Plant another one. But the next year, that tree had 12, 12 beautiful pears on it. That makes 24. <laughs> if my math is right here. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's the most beautiful tree in the whole world. Yes. Well, that, that came from the original Garden of Eden. <laughs> Many people think that in the Garden of Eden that it was an apple. The problem was not the apple. The problem was the pear. And we pray for direction every day. How many get up in the morning and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Anybody here? I challenge you to do that. Open my eyes that I may see. Ways that I can pray for others as they pray for me. Many of us pray for direction. Lord, help me. Jan used to pray for direction when I was driving. <laughs> yeah. No, it didn't always work because I'm a male. And the male animal does not believe that a woman knows what she's talking about. When he's behind that wheel, he's in charge. Third time through that same tunnel, she said, <laughs> maybe we had chains. And then I asked, Lord, help me. Help me to be like you. Now, did Jesus meet every Sabbath? Not necessarily. Did he honor the Sabbath? No. Paul talked about that in Romans 15, 13, 14, 15, that the day means nothing for everything, every day is the Lord's day. Now, I'm not going to get, this is not being, being nasty, this is just being truthful. I am not a seventh day Adventist. I am not a Sunday Adventist. Sabbath day, Christian. I am a seven-day Christian. 24 hours a day, I belong to Jesus. Not just Sunday morning or Saturday morning or Friday, whatever. Every day, every moment of that day, Every breath I take is from him. I want to talk to you about how the Lord prayed. And I want you to listen real close. I'm going to get to some things that will make you think I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm telling you I do. I usually tell you go home, check it out. I, and don't believe a thing I say. How many have heard me say that? Well, I want you to do it. I'm going to tell you something you were never told. But it's flat out of the Bible. Many people think the Lord's Prayer is... Our Father, which art in heaven. That is not the Lord's Prayer. The disciples said unto Jesus, Teach us how to pray. Now, at that time, they were a corporate 
body of believers called Jewish people, right? And there were certain kinds of Jews, but these were very devout Jews. They followed him around. They had yet to receive the Holy Spirit in their life. They had yet to be born again. But they really wanted to know about this man named Jesus, so they followed him. At that time, the cross had not happened. Prior to the cross, the old Jewish laws were the correct way to live. Most of them were thou shalt not. After the cross, or that now I want you to do this. See, before we couldn't do it, now we need to do it. Okay? After the cross, we see some major changes in what the Lord's Prayer or Disciples' Prayer really meant. Number one, it is not our Father anymore. You should not be saying our Father was are in heaven. Now, Dave, we just said it in your church today. Yeah, we did. Why? Because it's so hard-headed and hard to change our own mind and I know that's true because I've got one of those. Tradition, a lady told me today, this last few weeks, tradition is difficult to understand truth. It will obstruct your ability. What you have been taught all of your life if it's not true, it's still untrue. Somebody said, tell a lie long enough, people will, will believe it. And if you don't believe that, I won't tell you I can trump it, but I could tell you that uh, it is a, uh, if you tell a lie long enough, I will show you my social security, uh, my taxes before the election. And we believe you. And he told the truth. And I thought, my goodness. He didn't tell us which election. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, a truth that's told, uh, a fallacy is told long enough will become a truth. After the Lord's death and resurrection, Paul said, we now call him Abba, Father. Does anybody know what that means? What does it mean? Daddy. <laughs> daddy, my daddy. Not our father, but my father. Wow. Wow. Is that a change or a change? Secondly, when it says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, I may have said that a few times this morning. Now, I'm not giving an alternative. I'm just giving you a problem. Isn't that wonderful? Think about it. Has God led anybody in this room into temptation? Does anybody in this room need help to get into temptation? How many could do it on your own? I'm good at it, yeah. The actual Arabic and Greek would say this. Father, lead us out of our temptation. Father, keep us away from our temptation. Father, protect me from my temptation. Nowhere in the 
in any real interpretation does the Bible say lead us into temptation because God will not tempt anybody so why would we say that because we were told to we're running out of time we'll finish this another year or two but I want to tell you what the Lord's Prayer really is. How many believe, as I always believed, the Lord's Prayer was in the Garden of Gethsemane where he said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. How many have been told that's the Lord's Prayer? It's not. Biblically, that's not. The Lord's Prayer is John 17. where the emphasis on t is on two things, three things. Number one, keep them from the world because they're not of this world. They don't have to be like everybody else does in this world. But keep them from the temptations of this world. Keep them while they're in the world. Pilate asked Jesus, he said, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, no, I'm from another world. Wow. Yeah, wow. Think of it. The thief on the cross said none. How many good things had he done? None. None. All he did was recognize who the king was of the other world. Remember me when you come to your kingdom. Right? Jesus talks about in Matthew about the people who had gone to see the sick and had gone to jails and visited people and taken care of each other and, and they were called sheep, right? Another came to him and said, I did all those things. I was a good guy. And Jesus said, depart from me. I don't even know you. So what good are works if they don't work? Works are the things that Christians do because they want to do it, not because they have to do it. They have the power to do it where they couldn't do it before. Because greater is he that's in you that's in the situation that you run into. I want you to notice as you read the Lord's Prayer, John 17, which was recorded prior to his going to the Garden of Gethsemane. Did you hear what I said? This was prayed before he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said in his prayer, O Father, that we be one like you and I are one, that we're all one. Wow. And then he said this, that where I am, they may be also. Where was he? He was in the presence of the Father. He was a part of the family. He was a family of God. He wants us to be like him. That where I am, there they may be also. Now, the last fallacy I'll give to you, before I want to tell you the final, is this. The worst thing that's happening to most of us, 
I have been to literally hundreds and hundreds of memorials, funerals, life celebrations. How many know what I'm talking about? And they always read John 14. And it says, let your, not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many dwelling places, not mansions. Dwelling. Listen to that word. To dwell means to stay in, right? To dwell means not to just visit. To dwell in is to be there. That they may have a place in the family that where I am in the family, they may be also. I hope I have stirred your brains <laughs> like mine has been. It has nothing to do with mansions. It has to do with dwelling in the presence of the living God. That's what prayer is. Prayer is living in the presence of the living God. We're one with the Father for the world. Keep us from the world while we're here, Father. Because we want to be one with Christ. Teach us to pray, Lord. Remember this and repeat after me after I tell you. Prayer is to be aware. Prayer Say it with is me. To be aware. Prayer is to be aware. Let's, one more time. Prayer, prayer is, is to, to be, be aware. aware. That's what prayer is. Aware of the needs, the presence, the power, and the glory of God. I encourage you to live a life of prayer. Not a Sunday or a Saturday or a Friday or an hour here or an hour there, but listen to that still, small voice and be aware of your circumstances and apply the wonderful love of God. God bless you.